Hi guys, Sci-Fi Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a unique 2021 science fiction and action movie featuring Ryan Reynolds, called Free Guy. Have you ever played or heard of Grand Theft Auto or GTA? The movie takes place in an open-world desktop video game called Free City, where players can take part in action-packed missions like spy jobs or bank robberies in order to gain money and level up their characters. The strongest characters in the game are obviously the ones with sunglasses because they are controlled by real players. To support the storyline of the game, the developer also created non-playable characters or we call it NPC. An NPC is a character that is not controlled by a real player, instead it is programmed to do certain daily activities in the game. And of course, an NPC cannot die. Among the many non-playable characters in the game, there is Guy, a NPC who is programmed to be a bank teller in the game and unaware that his world is a video game. He works and spends most of his time with his best friend buddy, who works as security in the bank. The pair works in the bank that will always be robbed by real players and they always have to play the part of helpless bank employees as they get robbed. On the other side, there is a sunglasses character called Molotov Girl, who is making a deal with another player for a coordinate of a safe house that keeps a video that contains top secret information. Later on, as Guy and Buddy on their way to home, they suddenly walk past her. Guy seems surprised as she sings the song he says his dream girl will like. He comments on the song, which surprises the girl because she is used to hearing all the phrases each NPC has to say. Because of that, Guy begins to deviate from his programming and follows where the Molotov girl goes. But unfortunately, he is hit by a train, sending him back to his home and having to start his boring daily activities again. The next day, when the robbery takes place in the bank, Guy sees the girl he met yesterday and starts to rebel. He tries to fight back and manages to grab the sunglasses from the robber. When he puts them on, he finally discovers many features of the game that supposedly only appear to real players. He picks up the health boxes to heal himself and now he is also able to steal other players' money when they die. In the real world, Keys and Mouser, who work at Tsunami, a company that runs Free City, detect Guy's weird activities and suspect that he is a hacker who uses NPC skin to take down other players. To resolve the problem, they decide to go into the game as their avatars to confront Guy. Thanks to the sneakers from the sunglasses, he manages to jump away. They keep chasing after him. Guy tries to escape by grabbing onto a wrecking ball, but he misses and falls. Luckily, he manages to save himself with a bubble suit. However, the employees find him and hit him with the police car, thinking they have taken the hacker out for good. Keys feels something strange as the number of online players did not change even after they killed him, indicating that it wasn't a hacker. Suddenly, an interview of Keys with Millie in earlier years is displayed, discovering Keys and Millie are the masterminds behind the free city before Antoine, owner of Tsunami Company, stole their original code from Life Itself game, a game which was originally developed by Keys and Millie, and used that code to build free city franchises. Surprisingly, Millie is the player behind the Molotov girl character. Millie visits Keys and asks him to help her get evidence of Antoine's crimes because she knows the proof of their stolen code is hidden in a safe house, which she is going to infiltrate while playing as Molotov Girl. Later on, Guy approaches Molotov Girl outside the safe house. The house guards spot them and start shooting at them, so they have to flee. Guy offers to help her in her mission, but it is impossible as he is only at level 1, while she is already at level 195. Guys then starts taking on missions and pulls off several heroic acts like returning stolen money and pulling kids away from traffic. Because of his uniqueness, players in real life start to notice him and Guy suddenly goes viral with his unique nickname called the Blue Shirt Guy. He even shows up as an answer on one of America's quiz show, Jeopardy. Long story short, he manages to reach level 102. The next day, Guy comes to the bank and persuades Buddy to join him after stealing sunglasses from a player who is doing a heist mission at the bank, but Buddy refuses to do so because he thinks it is too dangerous. Antoine realizes the popularity of Guy and wants his employees to keep Guy on the game. Additionally, the company is also going to launch Free City 2 in two days, despite not being fully coded and still contains bugs, and he makes it worse by telling Keys that the game is not backward compatible with the first game, meaning that most of the characters will not be able to be played in the Free City 2. The Molotov girl goes back to the safe house and manages to take the stolen code. But, she is confronted by the house's guards and gets cornered. Out of nowhere, suddenly Guy crashes through on a motorcycle and helps her to eliminate the guards before escaping by using a hang glider. After the event, the two hang out and Guy surprisingly manages to guess the Molotov girl's favorite ice cream flavor, which is bubblegum ice cream. 
She is impressed because nobody likes that flavor and he manages to guess it right. It's just like guy knows everything about this Molotov girl. They end up kissing before Millie disconnects from the game. Keys finally realizes there is something strange about the codes of the Free City's NPCs. He tells Millie that Guy is not controlled by a hacker, instead he is the first living AI which could be able to decide his own path. This proves that Antoine has stolen their code and implemented it to the Free City, because their main idea for the game was to have the NPCs grow and develop over time as they adapt, and that is what Guy has been doing recently. He also warns Millie that the current world of Free City will be completely erased when the Free City 2 is launched, which is 48 hours from now. Thus, they decide to ask Guy's help. Millie goes back to the game as Molotov Girl. She reveals to Guy that he is just a character in a video game who does not exist in real life and he will be completely deleted if he doesn't help Millie. After knowing the truth, Guy feels so sad and runs to the beach. There, he realizes that something is hidden behind the beach and he decides to help the Molotov Girl. Guy then asks Buddy to go with him to the safe house, where the stolen coat is kept. But surprisingly, the guard's real player is a big fan of Guy and is very excited to meet him. He basically lets Guy rob him and take what he wants, even asking Guy to kill him, but Guy refuses the request. He later brings the file to Millie. On the other hand, Guy's popularity has risen sharply, even popular streamers in real life like Pokimane, Dan TDM, and Ninja are talking about him. Knowing about that, Antoine gets pissed off and thinks that Guy's presence in the game will hurt the Free City 2 sales. Mouser suggests to reboot the system, so that Guy will get back to its default form. In the game, Guy and Millie manage to access the file, showing an island which proves that Antoine really stole their code. Guy claims that he has seen this island, but doesn't remember when or where. The game then is successfully rebooted before he can tell where he saw it to Millie. Millie manages to get back into the game after the reboot, but Guy doesn't remember who she is as he is already back to his default setting. She asks Keys for help, and he tells her that Guy is created to always be searching for his dream girl, and he just needs something to help trigger the code. Molotov Girl decides to kiss Guy and it brings back all his memories, including where he saw the island. It turns out that the image of it is reflected off the blinds in his apartment. Because of that, Keys figures out that the island is just hidden beyond the city's horizon. Guy and Millie then gather all the NPCs in the game and tell them that there is an island across the city that allows them to move and act freely instead of what they were coded to do. The speech inspires all the NPCs and they start to move at their own will. With all the NPCs gone, the players are left confused. Mouser then shows Antoine a recording of Guy and Millie taking the secret file at the safe house. Antoine then realizes that Millie is involved and orders Mouser to kill them and kick them out from the game. Mouser uses his power as the game developer to destroy Guy and Millie as Guy is driving them outside the city. With the help of Keys, a ramp suddenly pops out and they manage to escape. They arrive at the beach, but Keys gets caught and fired from the company. Before he leaves Antoine's room, Keys launches his last help to the pair. He creates a bridge for them so that they can cross the sea safely. On the other side, Antoine orders Mouser to boot the game, which disconnects Molotov Girl and all the players from the game, but Keys secretly conducts a live broadcasting of Guy to all Free City players, so that they can still be able to watch him despite being disconnected from the game. Furthermore, Antoine also commands his employees to deploy Dude, a bigger, stronger, but dumber version of Guy who is not fully programmed, but it is the final weapon of Antoine to get rid of Guy. Buddy arrives to help while Guy gets tossed around by Dude. Before receiving the final blow, Guy manages to pick up sunglasses and deploy a Captain America shield, which surprises Chris Evans who is watching it live in a cafe. He also manages to deploy a Hulk's fist, and a lightsaber. However, Dude is too strong and keeps beating Guy until he puts the glasses on Dude, who now is able to see the world as Guy does and starts dancing randomly. Guy and Buddy then start running toward the island. Antoine starts to lose it and brings Mouser to the server room, where he plans to destroy the server and delete the game entirely. Mouser stops helping Antoine when he figures out that Antoine was really stealing the code from Keys, so Antoine begins to destroy everything with an axe, causing the city environment to be deleted, including the bridge. Unfortunately, Buddy can't make it to the end and is deleted from the game, but he tells Guy that he has had the best day of his life because of Guy. Guy runs and finally breaks through the barriers and makes it to the island, which is then revealed to all the NPCs and the players in the real world. Millie then confronts Antoine in the server room and makes a deal with him. She will let Antoine keep the Free City name for sequels and spin-offs, but Antoine has to let her have the original code of the game and stop destroying the server. Soon, Free City 2 is launched, but the sales slump because of numerous bugs and lagging online play, 
resulting in Antoine being kicked out from the company. On the other side, Millie, Keys and Mouser develop Free Life which brings all NPCs from Free City to there. Millie then watches a recording of Keys explaining the guy's character is always going to fall in love with Molotov girl because he created the algorithm based on Keys' own love to Millie. She realizes this and decides to approach Keys and kiss him. Back in the game, Guy and Dude finally become friends and surprisingly Buddy is brought back to life in the game and they reunite. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.